Hi guys, um, I hope you're doing fine and we are going to talk about holiness, God's holiness. How can you describe it? How do you define it? As we mentioned from the previous discussion, that it is possible to live a holy life by God's grace and enabling. But what does holy mean? Our society tells us that being holy is living a righteous life or life without sin. But let's learn about holiness in the Bible. Holy means separated. God's people were called to be holy because God is holy and they are to be separated from the other people or other nations. This can describe God as separated or different from all the things of this world, the same as what He wanted for His people. And just quick trivia, did you know that the word holiday comes from the root words holy day, which means that it's a different day separated from the rest of the days? That it's a special day where people will just take their rest or, or vacation or time off from work. With the definition of um, holiday, this helps our definition of God's holiness. God is indeed holy. Even His very name is special and sacred. This tells us that God should be treated differently, that God should be treated sacredly, and that God should receive a special treatment. We can even see that in Jesus Christ's teaching on how to pray that starts with this, Our Father, hallowed be your name. In the, in the original writing, it can be translated as Father. Let your name be honored as holy. Jesus tells us that we need to honor God's name as holy. That God's name deserves respect. That it should be set apart or separated from any other names and to be treated differently. Now, how many of us treat God's very name as holy? In this generation, we can be obedient to God's command without even knowing it. Like not committing murders or not stealing, um, not doing immoralities. And we humans even created laws for us to know the gravity of these sins. Yet most of us have neglected the name of God as special, as sacred, as holy. This generation encourages us to use God's name like it's, like, like it's a common curse. For example, Sus Mar Yosef. The origin of that word is Jesus, Mar Mary, and Joseph, right? Another one, OMG, which means, Oh my God. And a lot more commonly used words that puts God's name in vain. In our fallen state, we really cannot measure up to God's holiness. Only Jesus Christ can measure up to God's holiness. How? The fact that He was declared by God Himself as, as His Son. The fact that even the unclean spirits or demons declares that Jesus Christ is the Holy One of God. Should us fallen human who are living in an unrighteous way deny this truth? Our fallen state separate us from God. Yet God wants us to be holy. God wants us to be connected with Him. And even in the Old Testament, God's people would sacrifice the best unblemished animal or, or the best crops that they have to be cleansed from unrighteousness. Because in order not to die because of sin, they will need to offer a sacrifice on behalf of their unrighteousness, on behalf of their uncleanness. This shows us the gravity of sin that in order to be cleansed, there is a consequence. And I encourage you to ponder on, on these verses. I'm going to read that to you in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 that says in verse 9, For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with Him. Salvation is a gift. You can choose not to open it or keep it for yourself or choose to accept it and share it with everyone. Jesus was the sacrifice in behalf of our unrighteousness so that we can have a relationship with God so that we can no longer be separated away from God that we are already cleansed and can come before God in the name of Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior that whoever believes in Him will not perish 
but have eternal life. My prayer for you is that you will be able to know that Jesus Christ paid for our sins. God bless you guys. Thank you.